Yeah, well, congratulations on the film, first of all. Um, hopefully you're excited about the release. Um, so yeah, were you a fan of the uh, games before taking on this part? So I, I'd never played the games. I was just a bit too young when the TV show and everything came out. I was a fan of other board games similar to D&D, but I was much a, like a Street Fighter, Call of Duty. But my best friend is a huge fan of the show mm -hmm. and, and the board game. So he plays religiously once every week on the Saturday nights. That's his D&D time. So after the film comes out and when I finish filming, I'll probably he's definitely getting him and his crew uh, and I'll be playing with them on that Saturday night. He's going to teach me how to play. Oh, great. <laughs> and so was it like harder then to um, like be in, be in your character, prepare for the role? No. So my friend was the first person I called, but also the internet is such a vast resource for the subject area. And there's so many people who play the game and who have active forums. So when I was trying to research my character, there was an abundance of information that I could capture from. So I did grab a lot of that information because there were things like Albert, which was like, why is it called an Albert or why is it called a mimic? Or what's the what's the whole point of me having a green flame on my sword? What's a Thyan warrior? What's a red wizard? So these are questions that I was constantly asking myself when I was reading through the script and different types of, do I have magical powers? And my main thing was, do I have elf ears? Because I have this fascination with Lord of the Rings of being an elf. So uh, I was trying to lobby for that. But, but no, I, I, I didn't struggle too much. And I always could go to my friend and ask him, you know, why does, why does Dralas, the Thayam warrior, have a green flame? And he would tell me it's a special incarnation spell that I have that I can utilize. And uh, my character is undead. I was like, oh, great. So <laughs> my character doesn't die. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's, uh, I didn't have too much issues with researching that world of D&D because there's so much information online. Okay, yeah. Um, so then what was it about the script that you wanted to take on the, the role in Strellas? I've always liked the fantasy genre. Like I said, Lord of the Rings previously and Dragon. When someone says to you, Dragons, I was just like, yep, dope. I, I've always heard about Dungeons and Dragons. I've only seen the original film from 2000 with Jeremy Irons. So I had a rough idea about the genre. But I also knew it was very popular amongst people who play the board game. And for me, what attracted me to the project was the fact that I could play this badass warrior, Dralas, mm -hmm. who's the classic antagonist character. And when I was reading it, I had this, there was this big fight scene and also the language. I, I get to speak Thayan and I was like, oh, what is this? So when I heard a recording of the language, I was like, this is pretty awesome. So I was like, definitely, definitely got into that. But also it was my first real sort of action fight scene that I got to do. And I got to do that reggae Jean Page and it was incredible to do and had so much fun doing that. So for me, that was really what attracted to it. And also I'd never done CGI on the scale that, I've been that that is in the film, mm -hmm. so that was a whole a whole different ball game for me as well. Yeah, and the fact that um, DND has such a fan base already um, was it like more daunting than to film this because everyone already knows about it, really. It is because you've got such a hardcore fan base, and they know the characters in such depth and detail. There, there, it can sometimes come across quite daunting. But luckily, our directors John and Jonathan are they play the game. And they are fans okay. of the genre. So I knew I was in good hands, even though if I ne didn't necessarily know the game, I knew that people that were making it were doing the best intentions. And I was able to draw from them and go, John, what, why, why is it an owlbear? He goes, well, this is why it's an owlbear and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the scale of it didn't really intimidate me until I got to set. And then I saw the set and I was like, whoa, 100 foot <laughs> surrounded by blue screens and CGI. They, they made a massive ship. They made a whole village. Uh, of you know medieval period times and the costume itself was so immense the detail they had these little model mannequins about a foot high with all our costumes and i was like all right this is a different scale this is yeah. definitely a different scale that i've been used to and probably the biggest budget from i've ever been a part of and you know well i'm not actually you know but i did i did han solo which was on a similar scale as well but then when you really get onto set and you're doing your scene and you look at the you look at all the crew and you're like there's like 300 people watching me do the scene <laughs> so it wasn't meant yeah um and so you mentioned the costumes what was the first costume you put on and how did it feel I felt powerful, I'm not gonna lie. I felt like a kid at a candy shop. They they showed me my sword and they had the same swordsmiths from Game of Thrones. So it was like, you know, they spent a good 20 days 
forging and making my sword because it was made out of Damascus and it weighed about six and a half kgs. And it was so detailed that it was an actual beautiful work of art. It's just the, uh, the beautiful swordsmiths from uh, Northern Ireland made it. And it, it was incredible. The, the, the artistry, the details, the leather work that's on my costume to, to how it's bounded, it, the smallest details. It was literally, I feel like we've got some of the best craftsmen on, on this. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Reggae's costume, when you look at my costume, it took, I think, hundreds of hours of manpower to just get me set with my costume and the different mm -hmm. types of molds they had to make for my dagger. My makeup took me three and a half hours every morning to get on. And I had, at one point, I had two Oscar winning makeup artists doing my makeup. I was like, oh. this is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so we had Dave Malowski and, and we had um, Alex as well, who, who Dave just finished the, the Darkest Hour. So he did Gary Oldman's makeup. And I was like, I'm in good hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we had to do all that makeup test. So yeah, it was it was it was intense. It was immense, uh, uh, but it was it was great fun to be part of. Every day, I was excited to get on the set, even though we were we had loads of COVID restrictions. It was still good to get on that and then you know be a part of that creative team. Yeah, sounds like fun, really. Um, and so yeah, you mentioned that it took over uh, more than three hours to um, put the makeup on. Um, is there any like ritual you do when they apply? Like some I've seen some footage on play on their phone some read their lines or what are your rituals well i i was lucky so i had my lines set because it was it, they couldn't really change my lines much because we had to learn this made up language mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I, that wasn't too much of an issue but i'd have my music on i'd be playing country music or hip-hop or different mm -hmm. types of music and then i'd go all right makeup artist like name me a job or do like a 60s 70s 80s theme and we'd all have to come up with one artist so everyone got a rotation of their favorite song from that era in that period and you get to know your makeup and and hair and makeup team really well because <laughs> there's, there's at the end there was no more filter when we we're talking about things because you know you, you you spend literally six and a half hours more, like it took yeah three and a half hours in the morning and about an hour and a half to de-rig because it was a lot because i had to put this slick my hair back i had to put bold caps on take off all my makeup so it's a, you get to know your crew really well they become like <laughs> yeah. family um and yeah you already mentioned like the different sets like the ship and like the village and what was the set that made the most like the biggest impression on you the one that we fought on the one you'll see in the film that me and reggae have a big standoff and that was incredible because they made molds of statues and they, they there's a little homage because we filmed in northern ireland and there's a place called the giant causeway so the steps that you'll see i think you see in the trailer as well the steps is based on the giant causeway and that's how little homage to northern ireland and that was incredible because it was uh, at least 20 to 30 foot like the stairwell that they made and each step was different which was hard for us when we're doing the scene because we're fighting on uneven steps because we're fighting you'll see what we're fighting on uneven ground so that was a bit challenging for us mm -hmm. but that set was intense because that was that whole sequence and we that's where you see the dragon being revealed and that's what we're fighting and everything but what you don't see is that the, how intense the the blue screens are you got 100 foot blue screens around you surround you 360 above there's all these lights Mm -hmm. I'll put it on social media. You'll see the behind the scenes footage when the film oh, comes right. out. <laughs> I recorded a bunch of it, and uh, it, it was that was the moment when I was like, "This is cool." <laughs> Evil here. I'm glad he's on our side. Me and Reggie were doing these big kiais, so our, mm -hmm. our stunt coordinator would ki and go, Arr! and then me and Reggie would go, Arr! and then we go and we look and we get in our position, ready to start mm -hmm. scene. And we'd look at each other with intensity. Like, I was like, all right, it's on, my sucker. And he looked at me, he was like, yeah, it's on, Jay. We're, good. we're about to, we, we fought like when we were, it was controlled, but the aggression and the loft, you have to bring that to the fight scene, to the to sword fight, because otherwise it just doesn't sell on camera. So mm -hmm. I can safely say me and Reggae, if you look at 90 to 95% of that action sequence in, when you're watching the film, me and Reggae did pretty much all of our own stunts on that. Like even the wire work, Reggae did a lot as well. Our, our stunt doubles did an incredible job. There were some things that we couldn't do and you'll see that as well in the film. But majority of it, I would say that the, all the wire work that I I did in that was me. Uh, and the fight, we took about, we I learned the whole choreography in about 
a week i think reggae did the same thing but we then spent two weeks refining it refining it every day for two hours we're fighting on set fighting on set fighting on set mm -hmm. even off set we're like should we should we run through it and then mm -hmm. just to get that it's a dance that we're practicing and because there were other characters around us as well we had to make sure the timing was right as well mm -hmm. and the, like we said the floor was so uneven like there'll be a rock in the way all of a sudden the statue in the space of the wall was a lot smaller so we couldn't jump around it so there's a lot of these things so we had to over choreograph and then we didn't you know, the full choreography was about four minutes for the for the fight sequence we only managed to film a quarter of it but it still made an impact on screen and that happens a lot so we had to we over choreographed and then and then we only shot like maybe two minutes of the full thing because that's all we had time for because it was such a it was such a busy shoot and there's so much going on so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy it and it looks epic i i watched it last week and it was quite epic i was i was happy with the fight scene yeah. and how it came yeah. <laughs> so i hope you guys i hope you guys um, when you're watching it, know that there was a lot of blood and sweat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a lot of sore fingers. Me and Reggae smashed each other in the hands quite a few times. Oh, no. <laughs> At full impact with rubber swords that still hurt. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, and so there, you mentioned that there was like a lot of like blue screen and green screen. Um, so what was the scene that you filmed? And then when looking back at it, it was like, this is totally different than what I imagined. Yeah, so the one thing that really stuck to my mind was the dragon. There's a scene in the, in the film where you'll see the dragon pop out. And at the time, it was this man in a, in a blue leotard, like literally like full faith, like he had a little eye holes there. And he's holding this stick with a tennis ball and he's running after us. And we had to look at this tennis ball <laughs> and sort of run away from the, from the dragon. And uh, you, you can see it in the trailer. And it's just the tennis ball that we're reacting to. And then, and then the director is cut, um, shouting out what he's, what the, what the dragon is doing, and it's coming around, and it's looking at you, Jay, run! And then you go, and you have to look at the fin and run, and then so mm -hmm. it's like you had to use your whole imagination for that, and uh, and getting getting all the other cast members to look at it at the same time and react, mm -hmm. and then moving at the same time. It took a few takes for us to do that because it's not easy capturing that moment and making sure, and you got to do that what twenty times that same day with the same reaction. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's so nuanced because of the CGI, you, you've got to go back into the same position. So it was a lot of, okay, we need to reset you in this position here now. Oh, Jay, your, your left hand was slightly higher. Your chin was slightly up. So it, it, it gets a bit tedious, but it was, a, mm -hmm. it was definitely a fun experience to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so when watching the trailer, it seems like you guys have a lot of fun because it seems like the film is like very lighthearted and very yeah fun. Was there like any like they on set that you guys were just like laughing all the time that there has to be like some yeah then you had to pause the filming because you guys were just having so much fun uh there was i, I had i had a lot of fun there was more of the fight scenes but we had to refocus on that there was a day on set when i was there watching i wasn't on i wasn't acting that day but mm -hmm. it, it's really been written i think hugh grant had a little bit of a moment on set where he sort of <laughs> lost his uh lost his cool <laughs> that had everyone in stitches because the look on his face when he had to say when he thought it was someone else because he lost it and it was someone was in his eye line he said he had a christian bell moment i think indy Raya wrote the story uh that was the funniest moment on set for me because he grants the nicest guy like he gets by rep for being you know grumpy and everything but he's the nicest friendliest funniest person yeah. and he's the one who who brought the laughs and giggles and michelle brought the laughs and giggles but everyone else was quite focused but it was hard because we couldn't the set wasn't what it could have been because we're mm -hmm. all restricted with COVID, COVID at the time because we shot you know during pretty much the height of that in northern ireland so we all had to go back to our easy jobs. we all were separated we all had masks on so you know we tried to keep the spirits up and, mm -hmm. and michelle definitely does because she brings the music and she brings the energy she's always like round oh, really? and then <laughs> You know, everyone else is pretty chilled and reggae's you know, me and reggae had to you know keep our focus on our intensity as well but hugh definitely brings the laughs to, <laughs> and jokes and giggles to the set and again i watched it you'll see he's a steam sealer i've got to learn more from him he's he just he's just funny he's just having a great moment right now i think in in dormant and and everything he does he's just having a great time and you can see it in his performances he's always just mm -hmm. funny and i hate him <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that. <laughs> um and yeah we, um besides like the dnd film you also have another one uh coming out in april the convenant 
<laughs> yeah, so that's with Guy Ritchie. It's my third picture with him, which is crazy to say. And The Covenant is a film that you wouldn't have seen Guy Ritchie do just yet. It's not a genre that you've seen him attack. For me, the film is beautiful. And that's not something you normally hear when you hear Guy Ritchie films. You think guns, dudes, mm -hmm. fast cases, violence, quick one, quick one-liners. And, and for me, this is probably the most beautiful film he's done. And okay. a lot of people have said that. So it's, and you've got Jay Gyllenhaal, so it's a different level now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're working with him, it's just like he, he's an incredible actor. And I was, it was incredible being on set with him creatively and also other actors like Johnny Lee Miller, like someone mm -hmm. who I've been watching since I was a kid. And he's one of my heroes growing up because he grew up, he, we had the same drama teacher. So I studied his performance since he was 16 years old on stage. And uh, who was Alexander Ludwig, fearless on camera. He's so poised. Mm -hmm. He's incredible to work with. And the other cast members in, in, in the whole team, Dar Salim does an incredible performance, just a very poised, beautiful delivery. And, and, something quite prevalent i feel because what we see with us and uk forces exiting afghanistan it's only happened what less than a year and a half two years ago that we mm -hmm. that we exited and pulled out straight away and it's the same and it's looking at the relationship between soldier interpreter brotherhood a promise and essentially about a man who wants to get his family into to safety so it's a family story. There's a family essence to that there. And it's about a man's promise to go back to help mm -hmm. this man that saved his life. So always mm -hmm. fun going back to mm -hmm. do something like The Covenant. And hopefully, I feel the audience will find something different from a Guy Ritchie film that you're not normally mm -hmm. used to. Okay. Um, and yeah, because you had like fight scenes in D&D, was it then easier to um, do the other film? Because obviously it's about the war and soldiers as well. It's never easy to do an action sequence because it takes okay. so much time. But I, I, I've done a few sort of war films. I've done a few, you know, fight with when it has firearms and guns and stuff like that. So I, I was used to it and I and I enjoy those sort of projects doing that. So mm -hmm. it came a bit more easier for me. D&D &D was definitely more of a challenge physically because I had to train every day for it. Uh, three hours every morning I was training for that. But the Covenant's action sequence, well, I, I'm I'm much more at ease with that. And also we had a great stunt coordinator and a military advisor, Kawa, who was a former Green Beret in the US Army. So he was on set teaching us the movements to make sure we look authentic on screen because there's nothing worse than looking like you don't know how to handle a rifle because these guys are trained warriors. They do it every day. It's muscle memory. It's like you're going into a Starbucks and ordering an oat latte and you can just do it without thinking. So that's the same energy we want mm -hmm. to replicate the camera. Mm -hmm. and, um, I haven't seen the film yet, but I can imagine that it's like a lot of explosions and gunfights and stuff like that. Um, so what was like the biggest scene to like film? Uh, probably the, the biggest scene was, was definitely the IEDs. There's, there is a lot of explosions, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Those are always daunting. It doesn't matter how safe they, they make it for you. Mm -hmm. something's exploding behind your head and there's a massive <laughs> flame that's coming up there's no way that you can't be not cool like you can't innately as a human being you mm -hmm. are going to go okay there's something exploding behind you <laughs> so the reactions are real there's no, even though you do it three four five a hundred times the reaction is still real because you're like something's exploding something's exploding behind me mm -hmm. and you know all the debris is cork and everything like that but it's still like there's a flame going up 60 feet in the air and it's making mm -hmm. a massive boom like i'm when they go jason on action make sure you run that's like don't worry i will be running <laughs> <for my life." laughs> so mm -hmm. that was that was quite challenging and, and always i feel a bit nervous doing that i i never come i know that i was always safe but, you know, it's still exploding. <laughs> my biggest fear was make sure I pick up my feet so I don't trip up because I'm that sort of person that would end up tripping on my feet and falling on oh, my no. face. <laughs> and, uh, and there's another scene you'll see in the Covenant when I'm running up a hill. That was the steepest hill I've ever run up. And it was a, a moment of, Jason, you're running up that hill. Okay, go, action. And literally <laughs> you're running up that hill. And then, uh, <laughs> and then no one, I never, I ran it up ran up that hill so fast and it was really steep because we had to look over the ridge mm -hmm. and then they were all right come back down we're still filming and i went oh how am i gonna <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got to slowly come back down mm -hmm. whilst oh. being safe so yeah those are the moments that i found a bit daunting but you know hopefully it captured some sort of realism when you see it on camera mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, I just got one last question. Um, apart from the two films we already spoke about, do you have any other projects uh, coming up? Yeah, so I've got HBO Max's Warrior. That's mm -hmm. coming out at the end of this year. That's with Andrew Koji. And that is one of those, that story is conceived and devised by Bruce Lee. So he's the one who did the whole treatment and then HBO picked it up and then they did the whole full series. So I'll be coming out in that. And then also Alex Ryder, I'm filming right now, which is why I'm back oh. and forth. Okay. Uh, so I'm doing Alex Ryder season three going in as the mm -hmm. new lead again, antagonist <laughs> for that okay. the character of Niall, which is based on the novels uh, that Guy has written. So I I'll be I'll be going in, sorry, Anthony Horatz who who wrote that and so I'll be doing that next. I'll be in the whole season of season three for freebie and Amazon Prime. So mm -hmm. lots of exciting projects coming up and yeah. hopefully there's a few more in the pipelines that'll be coming up that I can't talk about just yet. But oh, okay. <laughs> I'll just, yeah, I I'm just it's still, it's still TBC, so I don't I don't wanna talk too much about it. But those are the ones that I'm that I filmed and filming at the moment. So I can tell you about those. <laughs> okay, great. Um, yeah, well, I'm gonna look out for all those um, new projects. Um, well, thanks a lot for this interview. It was nice talking Thank to you. Thank you so much. Here's the thing. We're a team of thieves. And when you do this, you're bound to make enemies. Sometimes those enemies come looking for revenge. Truth be told, we helped the wrong person steal the wrong thing. We didn't mean to unleash the greatest evil the world has ever known. But we're gonna fix it. So how do we pull that off? Uh... Figure it out over a drink? Probably best. You need cooling! They give us a fighting chance. We're gonna need strength. You got this, right? I know you don't. We also need courage, Back to school magic, and you. What is that again? It's an owl bear. Let's go. Be warned. There is evil here. I'm glad he's on our side. This one's dangerous. But whatever happens... We'll be ready. exactly that you bring to this i'm a planner i make plans you've already made the plan so if the existing plan fails i make a new plan so you make plans that fail no he also plays the loot not relevant <laughs>